Hey there, I'm Apple Creator with Investing Simple. In this video, we're providing an in-depth look at how taxes work on Webull and answering the question of how do taxes actually work on the Webull investing platform. While taxes definitely aren't the most attractive part of investing, they are super duper important because you do not want to be caught on the wrong side of the IRS, okay? Making sure that your taxes are in order, that you're reporting everything you need to be reporting is super important. It's not that complicated. So this video is going to outline everything you need to know about taxes on the Webull platform, how much much they are, how to find what you owe, and how to actually facilitate that entire process. So let's dive right on into it. Well, when it comes to filing your taxes on Webull, one thing you have to know is that Webull is legally required to report all of your gains and all of your losses to the IRS. This includes your cryptocurrency gains and losses, okay? Big misconception a lot of people have is that your cryptocurrency gains are not taxed. This is false. Your cryptocurrency gains are in fact taxed. So Webull is going to report those and you are going to have to report those as well on your personal tax return. Now, Webull will not be mailing you any tax forms. These will all be done online. They'll be sent to you online, both via email, and you can access them via the app. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So when it comes to filing your taxes, you're either going to have to print these things out and give them to your CPA, or they do have an integration where you can actually just import them directly into TurboTax or a couple other tax provider softwares that will allow you to just really streamline the process if you do your taxes yourself. Now, when it comes to actually receiving your tax documents, here is the process that Webull is going to follow. First, they're going to send you an email one day before your statements are ready to view, basically saying, hey, just a heads up, tomorrow we're going to be sending you your tax documents. And then the next day, they are in fact going to send you your tax documents, both in an email and they'll make them available within the app. If you go to your account settings, you'll be able to find the tax documents section and you can download them either within the app or you can get them directly from the email that they sent to you in the form of a PDF. Now, there are three different tax documents that Webull might send you depending on what your account activity looks like. The first of which is a 1099R. They're going to send you this if you've received over $10 in distributions from a retirement account in that particular year. So things like an IRA or a Roth IRA, if you're taking a taxable distribution from that account, so if you're taking a distribution basically before you are 59 and a half years old, there may in fact be tax consequences associated with that. We'll talk more about those later. But if that is the case, they will be sending you a 1099R that contains those particular distributions. The next one they might send you is a consolidated 1099. This one's going to be sent to pretty much anyone who has sold any investments in the particular year. And there are kind of three different forms that make up this consolidated 1099. The first of which is a 1099B, which is going to include any broker transactions that you did with Webull over the year. The second of which is going to be your 1099 div, which is going to include any dividends that companies paid out to you over the last year. The third of which will be a 1099 int, which is for reporting interest payments that you received from any bonds or ETFs or any other assets that paid you interest over the course of the year. All three of those are kind of wrapped together into the consolidated 1099 that Webull is going to send you. The last form they might send you if you have a retirement account is a form 5498. This is for reporting retirement account contributions because if you contribute to a retirement account, there's a chance that it could be a tax deductible contribution and you could potentially get to write it off from your taxes. If that's the case, Webull is going to send you a form 5498 that is going to include how much you contributed and how much of that was actually tax deductible. So now that you know what forms you're looking to get, let's talk about the actual tax consequences of the amounts that are going to be reported on those forms, starting off with your dividends and interest payments. Well, if you're not familiar with what a dividend is, some large and well-established companies will actually pay a cash payment to you, typically on a quarterly basis, just for being a shareholder in the stock. They're kind of returning some of their earnings to you for being a shareholder. So that is what a dividend is, and those are taxed. They can either be taxed as qualified dividends or non-qualified dividends. The difference is that one is taxed at a higher rate, one is taxed at a lower rate. So non-qualified dividends are going to be taxed at a higher rate, whereas qualified dividends will be taxed at a lower rate. And the difference between the two is that a qualified dividend is one that you have held in a company for a longer period of time. So there's a specific window of time that you have to hold a stock for, for it to be considered a qualified dividend. It's basically a 60 day period surrounding the dividend date. It's a little bit more complicated than that though, but just know if you're holding stocks for the long term, it's likely that their dividends are going to be qualified, but you want to talk to a tax specialist or do a little bit more research on your own to really figure out how the rules work on that a little beyond the scope of this video. But qualified dividends will be taxed at your capital gains rates, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, whereas non-qualified dividends will be taxed at your ordinary income tax rates. So the corresponding tax bracket that you fall into, that is where your non-qualified dividends will be taxed at. This can range all the way up to about 37%, whereas your qualified dividends, your capital gains rates only range up to about 22% on the high end. Now, in terms of any interest you receive from different bonds or ETFs, that is going to be treated as income and taxed at your income tax rates, which are again the higher of the two types of taxes. 
Now there is one exception to this, which is municipal bond interest. So if you hold any municipal bonds or any municipal bond ETFs, these are municipal bonds basically just means a bond issued by a particular city or municipality. Those interest payments are likely going to be income tax free at the federal level, potentially at the state level as well. So those in most cases will not be taxed, but you want to make sure that you really take a look at your documentation and fully understand whether you're getting any municipal bond interest or not. Now, the next type of gains you might receive are what's called capital gains, okay? And these basically come about when you sell a stock for a gain, okay? If you bought a stock for $10, you sell it for 20, you've got a $10 capital gain on that investment. That is going to be taxable. Now, on the other hand, if you bought it for 20, you sold it for 10, that is called a capital loss. And in most cases, it is going to be deductible to a certain extent. Now, with both capital gains and capital losses, you have what are called long-term capital gains and capital losses and short-term capital gains and capital losses. The difference between these is how long you actually hold the investment for. So for a capital gain to be considered long-term, you have to hold that investment for 366 days or more, so longer than a year. If you hold a stock for one year or less, it is considered a short-term capital gain. Now, the tax rates associated with these are going to be different. So long-term capital gains will be taxed at those lower rates that we talked about earlier that go up to about 22% on the high end, most people will fall into the 15% tax bracket for their long-term capital gains. On the short-term side of things, those are going to be taxed at your income tax bracket rates. So all the way up to 37%, depending on what income tax bracket you fall into, that is where those are going to be taxed. So in general, the government wants to encourage you to hold your investments for the long-term. That is why your long-term capital gains rates are lower than your short-term capital gains rates. Now we mentioned retirement accounts earlier, and there are a couple of specific rules that come along with retirement accounts and actually pay taxes on those investments. Now, any interest, dividends, or capital gains that you get in a retirement account are going to be tax deferred as long as you're not making any distributions from your account. So as long as the money is staying in your account, so you buy a stock for $10 in your retirement account, you sell it for 20, you keep that $20 in the retirement account, you don't take it out, you don't put it in your checking account, you leave it in the retirement account, that is going to be tax deferred until you actually take money out of the account. Okay, that's how retirement accounts work. So if you're buying and selling in a retirement account, don't expect Webull to send you a tax form reporting any gains that you made in that account because they're not going to be taxable now. They're going to be taxable when you actually retire and start taking money out of the account. However, if you have a Roth IRA, then things are a little bit different. Okay, what I was just talking about, that applies to a traditional or a normal IRA. If you've got a Roth IRA, what actually happens in that case is that you are taxed on the money before you put it into the account. Therefore, any growth that happens in the account is going to potentially be tax-free if you wait until retirement to take that money out. Now, there's a ton of additional rules on retirement accounts that are beyond the scope of this video, I'm not going to get into those, but just know that for a Roth IRA, it's a little bit different. Now, speaking of rules, there are also some penalties that come along with retirement accounts if you do not follow the rules. Typically, that's going to be a 10% penalty on your gains if you did not follow the rules. So if you bought a stock for $10 in your retirement account, you sold it for 20, you took that 20 out of your retirement account before you were able to, then you're gonna face a 10% penalty on that $10 gain, so about a $1 penalty in that case. Additionally, you're probably gonna be paying income taxes on that money as well. So these do start to add up fairly quickly if you start taking early distributions from your retirement accounts. Now, in most cases, to meet the qualifications to take money out of your retirement account, you have to either be 59 and a half years old, you have to be dead, or you have to be disabled. So if you don't meet one of those three criteria, you're probably gonna face a penalty and potentially income taxes as well for taking money out of that account. Now, there are some specific exceptions that come into play when you look at things like higher education or buying your first home, but those are gonna apply on a very case-by-case -case basis. And in general, you don't actually wanna take money out of your retirement account before you retire because that money is there for retirement. Now, another tax rule you have to watch out for on Webull is what's called wash sales, okay? And a wash sale essentially is when the government thinks that you are trying to manipulate the tax system by taking advantage of a loss. So if you sell an investment for a loss, you have to watch out for the wash sale rules. And essentially what the wash sale rules say is that if you sell an investment for a loss and then within 30 days, you buy that same investment or something very similar to that investment, then they're not going to allow you to deduct that initial loss that you claimed. What they're going to do is they're going to roll that loss into your new investment. And then once you sell the new investment, then you can actually get the loss. So for example, let's say I buy $100 worth of Apple stock today. And then in a year, I sell that Apple stock for $10, okay? It's fallen from $100 all the way to $10. I made a really bad investment. And now I have a $90 loss. Well, let's say that a week later, Apple stock turns around, now it's trading at $50 a share. And I'm like, shoot, I wanna get back in. So then I buy $50 worth of Apple stock. Well, the thing is, I am no longer allowed to claim that $90 loss that I had because I bought back into Apple too soon. So I had to wait over 30 days to buy back into Apple. And if I didn't, then I could not actually claim that deduction because that is what is called a wash sale. Now, 
Now that's going to apply on all investing platforms, but you have to make sure to watch out for that, especially on Webull when you might be buying and selling more frequently. Now, when you sign up for Webull, you need to give them your info. So your address, your social security number, maybe your employer, a lot of like personal information. And that's for two reasons. Okay. That's one, so they can verify that you are who you say you are. And two, that is so they can report your gains and losses to the IRS and that the IRS has a record of what you're doing in your investment account. Now, these taxes that you're paying with in Webull are actually the same tax that you'd be paying with any investment account. Now, the only difference is with Webull, you're not getting any physical copies of your tax documentation. That's going to be the same with basically all the investment apps out there. They're, they're cutting costs somewhere. And one of those costs is with the, the shipping costs and the paper costs of actually preparing your uh, paper tax documents. Now, when you are investing on Webull, it's really important to keep in mind the different tax consequences for different types of gains. So your interest, your dividends, your capital gains, keep in mind all, all the differences there. And especially with the long-term and the short-term treatments of these different investments, it could really make a huge impact on how much tax you actually end up paying. Lastly, you want to make sure that you know the rules for retirement accounts if you are contributing to one, because if you break those rules, it's going to be very costly for you. Now, if you want to learn more about how taxes actually work on Webull, we have a full comprehensive article on our website, investingsimple.com that breaks down everything you need to know about taxes on the platform. The best way to find that is to head on over to Google, search for Webull taxes and click on the link for investingsimple.com. We will see you over there.